Juan Carlos Hidalgo joins me now, policy analyst for the Latin America Cato Institute. Uh, it's good to see you again. Joel brought up an interesting point, and that was they could resolve it, but they're not going to. The difference is, is one and a half billion, but there's more to that number than sort of meets the eye. What, what's happening? Yeah, the deal is that 93% of bondholders agreed to this swap. Yeah. You know, they, they, they changed their old bonds for, and they yeah. then- They agreed to take less money. Yeah, like a haircut of 60 to 70%, you know. Uh, and, but let 7% of, 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 of those bondholders like- They want all the money. Hail. Yeah, they want all their money. Some of them took Argentina to the courts, and now they won this case, and Argentina owes them 1.5 million. But not all the, not all the uh, holdouts went to the courts. If Argentina were to pay the, the guys who won the battle, the legal battle, $1.5 billion, the other holdouts can ask for uh, the money too, yeah. for so, me to claim. Which is another 15 billion. So why don't that's you just give the 15 billion? Indeed, that's, just I give think them that's the 15 the, billion, they that's have the, the best, money. That's the best way. I mean, Argentina certainly doesn't have the reserves to pay so much money. They have like $29 billion in reserves. But the holdouts have uh, already agreed to receive bonds, new bonds. Is in, this about the money or is this about politics? It's politics. The, pre the president and her government thrive on confront conf confrontation. This Actually, is a her confrontation. Poll numbers, her poll numbers have gone up uh, since this, uh, this litigation started. And the problem is that this is not just the president. The whole, the entire political class in Argentina is behind the notion that Argentina should not pay these debts. Yeah, I mean, look. You have the, the hedge funds, which they're calling them vultures and yeah. greedy, so it's easy to villainize them. You've got the politics there locally. Most people are going to side with the people. They're not going to side with the hedge fund people and say, well, geez, I wish they would get more. No, no one thinks like that. Indeed, and we have seen those posters in the streets of Buenos Aires, you know, with pictures of vultures, uh, you know, attacking Argentina and, 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 and attacking their national sovereignty. The deal is that if Argentina doesn't pay and they remain in default, the economic situation in, our, in the country is going to continue to deteriorate. Yeah, but th and th that's a problem because Joe was talking about it. He talked about the high inflation, the peso de uh, depreciation. Ultimately, in the long run, that's going to hurt the people, right? Ultimately, yeah, that's going to hurt the people and the political class in Argentina. I'm not just talking about the government. I'm talking and then about the entire political class. The poll numbers then would go down. They'll have to, they have to reach an agreement somehow. And, and the question is how. How they will reach an agreement that will save their face, too, because they have already put so much political capital So let's, capital let's in put this. it on the table. What's your idea? How are they going to reach an agreement? I think that eventually once uh, uh, January comes to, to, uh, to I mean, once we reach January, because right now there are some uh, legalese there involved, which is the rise upon future offers, and it says that Argentina cannot offer uh, the holdouts a, a better deal than they gave to the people yeah. who had changed their bonds. Once uh, those, those RUFO rights, they expire in, in January. So people expect that in January, the Argentinian so government the, is going to the, reach. The, the, there's already an ending written for this, because in January, a lot of those individuals can't ask for the money back because exactly. they, they, their time has expired. And that, that th then all the excuses of Argentina are going to be off the table. The question is, is Argentina going to do that? By the level of rhetoric, they're, they're, they're attacking these this, hedge funds. I this, don't think that this story about Soros suing, what's this all about? Well, the deal is that some people are not getting their money, and they claim that the, the, their interest payments are not uh, subject to but, U.S. But law, why, but, but why but Soros? Law. Why Soros is taking the lead on this? Well, because apparently he's one of the people who who, who is owed money by by the Argentinian uh, government, and he's the one one of these uh, one of those people who have been affected by the fact that Argentina is prevented from paying the the exchange for holders. He, he wants the money too. Yeah, indeed. Is he going to get it? Uh, at least Argentina reaches a, a, a solution with the holdouts. Uh, the, the U.S. courts are going to prevent any payment to anybody else. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a real fascinating story. I guess we have to it wait is. until January is what you're saying. Or maybe until we have a new president in Argentina. I, 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 let the next election well, what, is October next year. Well, that's a good question. Does this affect the election? She cannot run for re-election. But certainly this can uh, boast uh, her party's popularity. Uh, coming to November. Yeah. She, she doesn't, affects, she doesn't have a, a, an heir apparent, so we don't know who is going to benefit uh, from her side from all of, all of this. Great. Always good to have you, Juan Carlos Hidalgo uh, from Cato. Thank you very much.